I really hit the jackpot. I found my heavenly love and my earthly love during approximately the same period. Even as I was making the wonderful discovery of God's goodness, he showed me that Von Ed Zachary was to be the right life partner for me. I remember sitting across the dinner table from her the night I proposed. I'd taken her to the Red Bud Ball at the Texas Women's University, where she was a sophomore. I told her all about my ambitious plans for my life and how they all included her. I was living in Hollywood, a city filled with beautiful women, but in my eyes, none of them could compare with the beauty of Vonette, inside or outside. Her positive response thrilled my heart. Together, we committed ourselves to Christ and to our relationship. We've never left that love for God or for each other. If you've ever been engaged to be married, you know what it's like to be utterly devoted to another person. Bonnet and I were separated by many miles. She was in Texas and I was in California. But I kept a steady stream of special delivery letters, flowers, candy, long-distance phone calls flowing in her direction all the time. I did everything I could possibly think of to impress and woo her because I wanted her to see how serious I was. I wanted her to feel the same way about me as I felt about her. Romantic love surprises us as it brings out creativity we never knew we had. And there's a deep longing as well. I can remember eagerly anticipating the time when we would actually be united in marriage, never to be separated. I was experiencing those same feelings toward God as well. I wanted him to be with me for the rest of my life too. I did everything I could to please him and devoted much time to prayer and the study of his word. I spent five years at Princeton and Fuller Theological Seminaries because I desired to learn more about Jesus and the Word of God. I yearned to know Him better and to be drawn closer to His great loving heart, just as I yearned to spend time with my beloved Vonette. Over the years, Vonette and I have worked hard to make our marriage the best we could possibly make it. You know, you're only married once according to the Scripture, and you might as well be happy. So in order to be happy in your marriage, you have to work at it. There have been many occasions when I had to travel for extended periods, and Bonnet could not accompany me. She was rearing our children. I had to work that much harder to maintain the intimacy we had cultivated. Distance and time could easily have become obstacles, but it was a matter of priorities for both of us to keep anything from damaging the closeness we desired. In the early years of our marriage, there were times when I was irritable or insensitive to my beloved wife. Early in our relationship, I was the president of our college young adult group at the First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood. I was called to counsel someone experiencing a great crisis that had caused considerable heartache and scandal to a famous Christian family, and even worse, to the family of God. The situation arose suddenly. I had no opportunity to tell Bonnet where I was. I left her sitting for hours after church in a hot car with no clue as to my whereabouts. I could have gotten a message to her, of course, if I'd stopped to be more considerate. But when I finally returned, Bonnet, needless to say, was less than pleased. She felt that if the shoe had been on the other foot, I would have been upset with her, and she was right. We had to talk that one out. As a matter of fact, we took valuable time at that early juncture in our marriage to reassess our relationship and our priorities. I discovered that in many ways, I needed to be more loving and considerate toward Vonnet's feelings. I needed to make it a habit of apologizing when I failed my wife, acknowledging my wrongs, and working to change my ways. And that is exactly what I did. Good things came out of that misunderstanding, and as a result, I grew to maturity just a little bit as a husband. Growth is always painful, but we have both learned a lot over the years. By really working in marriage, Bonnet and I have been able to maintain and deepen the love that first drew us together. When problems arise, 
I'm always quick to say 12 magical words that can enrich and even salvage any marriage. I am sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. I love you. And through the years, I've become more and more convinced that the man who obeys the command of Scripture to sacrificially love his wife as Christ loved the church and died for her will have a happy marriage. I believe our love for God works under many of the same dynamics as a good marriage. Meeting God for the first time can be very euphoric. There's a honeymoon period of faith in which loving God comes so easily and so naturally. With every new morning, we are eager to meet with him in prayer and to study his word. We're aware of his presence wherever we go. But over the passing of time, too often that thrill fades. The initial joy slowly dissipates until, without being aware of it, we discover we have left our first love. Vonette and I love to please each other, and we love to serve God together. After half a century, that has been our life, pleasing Him by loving each other, and pleasing each other by loving Him. Will you hurt deeply as you realize that the love has gone out of your faith that is godly sorrow. The right kind of sorrow is a good pain because it leads us to repentance. This is when joy occurs. I must point out, of course, that those who have never known God will have no such memories. If you have never received our Lord Jesus Christ and walked with him, you cannot know the beauty, the wonder, the grace of that marvelous intimate experience. Instead, you will feel a longing. You will have an awareness of your failures and your limitations as a human being. If so, God's Spirit is beckoning to you, drawing you to Himself. If you're experiencing a deep desire in your heart to turn from your sins, as we call our spiritual failures, and to experience God's wonderful love and forgiveness for the first time, be assured that He is waiting for you with open arms. But if sometime in the past you have known God intimately and have presently lost the intensity of your passion for Him, you can be sure that He is waiting for you to return. Think of how remembering the good times in a marriage helps keep it strong. I return to this example again and again, and there is a logical reason for doing so. You see, Jesus calls the church, you and me, his bride. The joy of a perfect marriage, great as it may be, is only a dim reflection of the deepest and most intense pleasure of all, knowing God in an intimate, loving, personal way. Vonette and I find that when we relive our first love for each other, we enhance the memory of those early sparks. His love, as we've seen, is the greatest and most profound thing in the universe. He is drawing you back to your first love for Him. Sometimes it's necessary to move through a period of sorrow to reach the destination of joy. As remembrance brings you to remorse, you are ready for the next step with God. Take heart, the best is yet to come. <laughs>